futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Good day all. I Rapstein of Linen Associates with your metals market update and this is for Tuesday, the 6th of March 2018, just after 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. I don't even know where to begin on some of the news of the day. Um, what we're getting tossed around with is tariffs, no tariffs, shotgun tariffs to the whole world, focus tariffs. Gary Cohn, Paul Ryan, both want to break away from the president should he go with the shotgun tariffs. I think they both accept the fact of narrowing the tariffs. The threats against Canada, Mexico, Europe threatening us back, it's all got, if you, sell, if you think about it, a rhythm to it and what's going on. The one thing President Trump did do is he's gotten everybody's attention. They know that he's a man of his word. They may not like his politics or his mannerisms, but if he says he thinks it's black, it's black in his mind. If he says he's going to put on tariffs, he normally will, but he does listen. That doesn't mean you can change his mind. But now he's got to decide if the press is right. Does he really want to lose Gary Cohn? I mean, there's so many people. McMaster, it's a revolving door if that happens. He needs stability there. And I, I think the simple fact is the world is telling him, the shotgun approach on these tariffs doesn't make sense, okay? The hope of the market was today, and you see it in the stock market, it's up. It's a risk-on mentality. Inflation thinking and a risk-on mentality is back here, and the lower dollar came back. If we take a look at bonds and notes, they're rallying, they're not breaking. And this doesn't appear today, at least, to be... Uh, people going for the safe havens. It's a different mentality in the market. Will it last? This is a market that's a trading market, not a trending market. I have been saying that for, I think, since January 28th. I went back and I looked. I haven't changed my opinion on most of this. But trading markets have a way of eventually stepping into a trend. If we take a look at gold, I'm in the wrong area here, the weekly chart. The market has gone from this low point up to 1353.20 corrected. And all during this, since literally before the end of 2018, prices on a weekly basis got over the 18 week moving average of closes, which I then can say has an upside bias to them. Not a trend necessarily, but certainly an upside bias. My definition is that when you're over the 18-week average, over it gives you an upside bias, under it a downside bias. That simple. The line in the sand is the number itself. Often, prices come, they'll challenge that number, they can come down, they go with it, and then they break away from it, be it to the downside or the upside. But they'll play against that number. It's not different on the daily chart when you use the 18-day average of closes. And lo and behold, if we come back together here, you can see this was Friday's close. Literally, since way back here, all right, and I think you'd agree, at least the beginning of uh, end of February towards the beginning of the month, and specifically, I guess we can do it right here and give you the dates. Why should I play around? It will be February 20th. The market got under the 18-day average of closes. That gives it a downside bias until today. One day doesn't make a trend, but it certainly has changed the look of the chart. When I come over to a daily bar chart, I have been telling you I think this market's problematic. I really think it got itself caught between here and up here. And yes, I know that we moved down a step and then we had that washout day and we bounced back. But I'm still convinced this was the original setup in the chart. Now with the market the past two days, and we can look at this, this day, Friday, you took out the high of a downtrend. You had been making lower highs, lower lows. That pattern changed on Friday. And when it changes, it doesn't mean you're bullish. You know, you don't have to go from bear to bull. You can go from bear to neutral, back to bear, bear to neutral, into bull. 
But to go from bear to bull, very difficult. You can count on your hands uh, if you're a technician. Uh, the times that occurs, it, it's, I don't know if you can get it in a year, one or two of them. So typically the market goes into a pause. Well, this market, in my opinion, that's just mine, when it got over that number, paused. The market then tr fell back, confusing the heck out of you on Monday, and all of a sudden today the market's right back up and away you go. Okay? Keep in mind this pattern. Silver shows it so much better. So now you have a market that if we come back together, and I'll come back right here, the market's under the 18-day average last Wednesday. If it continues falling, it, in my opinion, could go, doesn't have to, to the closest of the 100-day average or the lower Bollinger Band, depending on how much it breaks. Market drops down, follows through, gets to that 100-day average, and begins a bounce. And immediately on Friday, gets through this number. What's the next resistance point? Well, it should be the 18-day average of closes. If you take a look, yesterday's high was exactly 1328.90, and that's where the 18-day average ended up. So now you've got a market that's out of a downtrend. It still has downside bias. There's no trend at hand, and today the market jumps over that high back into an upside bias. Again, I don't see it trending just yet. When we step into Bollinger Bands, remember what I said, I'm always looking to see what the market could do. On this day, 1301.70 was the Bollinger Band. You only hit 1303.60, but the 100-day was 1305.40. So that is the zone that I think professional traders were lifting short positions. I can't tell you if they lifted them all, if they lifted any. I know if they took my course or talked to me what I would have told them. Now they're back to neutral. Neutral's neutral. It means you give up whatever you had. You're out of the downtrend, certainly not in an uptrend. Market's stalling, and today you're up. What about momentum? Momentum's pointing up. So I have two elements going on this chart. The bias is up, the momentum is up, and the trend to the downside ended. That's all that I can define it as. So I say, what about the ETFs? Are they, sometimes they offer a clearer picture than the futures market. So I go to them, and the ETFs sure as heck are. This is bullish. Higher lows, higher highs. So I view support at 126.03. My idea of the bullish is wrong if you take out 124.90. And if the market continues up, it could project to 128.28, momentum pointing up also. Okay, what about GDX? Because that has been the laggard on everything. Lo and behold, what a day. This is how GDX looked coming in today. Still under the 18-day average. It had a pattern of a lower and low, but a higher high. It came up on this day and negated the downtrend. Now, that was Friday, just like on the, on the gold futures. You then slipped back, didn't take out that low, and today, for the first time, you've thrown out an all-out buy signal in this because the market's got a higher low, higher high. It doesn't have to work. The question as I look at it is, where would my chart action be wrong? And if you took out yesterday's lows, I'm wrong. If the market goes up, I see a pretty stiff layer of resistance at the combination of the 100-day average and the 18. So that's how I define the chart action. The gold-silver ratio... Told you, 80 looks like a big number to me, and the market's trying to break out to the downside. Silver is the most interesting of the charts to me. In the silver chart, first of all, I, I think this pattern stinks. I don't know where the real high is. The swing line high is here, but the higher high is here. You had an outside day up, you took it out, you fell down to the lower Bollinger Band. Yesterday, you came back up, actually for the past three days, and fighting at the 18-day average. What did I say yesterday? And by the way, this is not about me calling market action. I am not in these tapes telling you to buy or sell ever. I am just telling you what I see in chart action, which is very different. And my theory is that when you have an outside day, which means you take out a previous day's high and low, and if it's a down day, you're always looking at that day's high. My own theory is it should not be taken out for two trading sessions if it's a daily chart. If it's a 15-minute chart, a two 15-minute periods, same concept. If it is my theory, 
it's a theory. I, I don't have all the raw data to prove it. I have 45 years of doing charts, and I'm always learning. Is that if that is taken out, I look for the market to make a run to either the closest of a moving average, and I have specific ones that are on the charts, and in this case, the closest would be the 100-day average and or the Bollinger Band. Bollinger Band's over it. So my number is the 18-day average of closes. Lo and behold, today, it takes that out, makes a run, gets to 1689.50, stops at 88.20. I don't care what it did. It's out of the downtrend. It, really, this market's not trending. It's got upside bias. It has fought these battles before, the 100 and the... 200-day average of closes. We're back up to this battleground that we've now fought at one, two. This could be the third time that it's doing it. Momentum's turning up. We'll see what happens. Somehow this market is suddenly focusing on these longer-term averages. It's important. In the copper market, you ended the downtrend today, in my opinion. Didn't start an uptrend, but I had patterns of lower highs, lower lows. I should not be taking out 13, 14, 55 if the pattern of lower highs, lower lows stays in, and I am very oversold in the market. Today you take it out, you go right up. The combination I'm looking for is the closest number first, 13, 17, let's call it 45 or 50, and then 13, 318. You tell me, you went to 1780. So the market's out of the downtrend, has not begun an uptrend the way I define the market, but that's important too. Now we get over to the platinum market. Now platinum had an outside day down yesterday, oversold condition. Again, if the market takes out yesterday's high, I am going to look for price in the 18-day average because that's the closest number to try to come together, and that came today. So unless you go back through that low first, I'm looking for that 18-day average to be hit. Palladium did not do that. Palladium's just oversold in a clear-cut downtrend. You don't want to see yesterday's high taken out, and the market's still got now the 18-day under the 100. This is not a good-looking chart at all. This is an ugly chart, nowhere near the other metals. In the dollar index, battleground 18-day average of closes, three days at it, Momentum turned down, and momentum began, it got overbought, and then turned down when? On Friday. And ever since then, you tell me, the market's been trying to work its way lower. Is there a trend here? There is not. Today's low at 89.47, if we go to these lows right here, the low was 89.42 and a half. You didn't even take that out. By the way, this was an outside day uh, down, and when you took it out, it should have made a run to the upper Bollinger Band, in my theory. Doesn't have to. I'm Swiss cheese, folks. There's plenty of calls that are wrong. Uh, but you look at that, boom. What about the rest of the markets? Well, we'll find out on the close, but I find it interesting that they're giving up some of the gain, which is good. I, I think that, again, we're in a trading affair, and if you're looking for a lot of follow-through, it's problematic. I'm going to write my gold report. I'm sorry I'm talking so long, but I am going to get it out. I hope to have it out no later than Friday, maybe the weekend. If you're not on my list, if you didn't get the last report, you're not getting this one. That's for sure. So call us, 866-973-2077. Tell my staff you want to get on it. It is free to get it out to you. You can go to our website, www.irapstein.com. Take a look there. You can Click up here if you're watching me on YouTube or under us. It says click here for Iris Free Information. Whew. Lot to talk about. I'm Ira Epstein. You have a good day.